In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. My beloved, today our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is baptized for us and for our salvation. The Church celebrates today the oldest feast in the Church. Long before the Church ever celebrated the birth of Christ, the Church was celebrating the Theophany, the revelation of the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. People oftentimes would think that one of the first feasts that the church would want to celebrate other than the resurrection is the birth of Christ. But in reality, the birth of Christ only started to be celebrated in the church in the late third and beginning of the fourth century. It took about 300 years before the church began celebrating the nativity. But from day one, the church wanted to celebrate one of the most important feasts. And that was the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there's two reasons for this. There's two reasons why the church always celebrated the feast of Theophany or the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the first and foremost reason is that it is in this event that we see the revelation of God in the form of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Here we see God manifest Himself and reveal Himself as soon as the Lord Jesus Christ begins His ministry for the salvation of the world. We see the Father in the form of Him who speaks and says, This is my beloved Son. And if you take a look at the icon here in the front of you, you will notice that the church never ever depicts the Father in visible form. The Father is always invisible. So where do we see the Father in the icon? You will see that there is a red squiggly line that comes down from heaven upon the head of Christ our Lord. This is the voice of the Father that is heard. And we hear Him say, This is my beloved Son. And we see the second person of the Holy Trinity, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the form of Him who took flesh for our sake and was baptized by John the Baptist. So we see the Son clearly as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then we also see the Holy Spirit who descends on Him in the form of a dove. The Holy Trinity our Lord and our God reveals Himself to humanity. This is why we call it Theophany. The word Theophany is a Greek word that is comprised of two different words, Theos, which means God, and the idea of Phania, or whenever you say Epiphany, it is a revelation. It is a person who comes to a realization. Here we see God revealed. This is one of the first reasons why this feast is so important to us. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are revealed to humanity visibly, accessible to humanity because of the work of salvation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But the second reason is also just as important. Today we were gathered with a group of youth and someone asked a very important question, did Jesus need to get baptized? What do you answer your children when they ask this question? Did Jesus need to get baptized or did He only get baptized so He can give us an example? This is a very tricky question because if you make the mistake of saying he only got baptized to give us the example, then you're missing the point. It's not only him giving us the example of what we should do. There is a reason why it should be done to begin with. You have to understand that the descent of the Holy Spirit on our Lord Jesus Christ was not because the Son needed the Holy Spirit to come down on him. We know that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are never separated. We know there is never any division between the Holy Trinity. So it would be foolish to think that the Spirit was not already working in the Son. So we know that the Son is always united to the Father and the Holy Spirit. Isn't this what we say as Coptic Orthodox Christians? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, eh? One God, never separated, always united. So it would be foolish to think that Jesus Christ our Lord needed the Holy Spirit to come down on him. What he needed to do was to allow the Holy Spirit to be united to humanity again. You see, if you go all the way back to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 6, in the very beginning of the book of Genesis, in the very beginning of that chapter, We read how it is that the Lord declares and says, My spirit cannot dwell with man forever. And we see how it is that the Holy Spirit that was always meant to dwell within the human being could no longer be in the human being 
because we cast ourselves out of the garden, because we separated ourselves from God. Our father among the saints, St. Saint Cyril of Alexandria, he says that the breath of life that God gave Adam was what? The Holy Spirit. His own Holy Spirit was always meant to dwell in you and me. But when Adam rebelled against God, and when Adam and Eve were cast out of the presence of God, the Spirit of God said, I cannot dwell with you. You have rejected me. And so I will respect your decision and leave you. So from Adam and Eve all the way to Jesus Christ, not a single human being had the Holy Spirit dwelling inside him or her. Now some of you might ask and say, but what about the prophets? What about the holy men and women? The Holy Spirit was capable of working through the holy men and women of the Old Testament. But it was through the visitation of the Spirit, not through the indwelling. The Holy Spirit could not dwell within a human being until this moment. Everything that Adam ruined, everything that Adam broke in the nature that God gave him, Jesus Christ came to heal and to fix. This is why the church teaches you and me to say what? That Jesus is the second Adam. What the first Adam could not contain, could not maintain, could not follow in obedience. The Son of the living God, the only begotten Word of the Father. He was obedient in His incarnation, in His birth, and in His baptism. Why? So that when He as a human being receives the Holy Spirit, you and me can receive the Holy Spirit again now too. There is this beautiful, beautiful aspect of the icon that you have in the front of you right here that many of you will not see until you come closer. So at the end of the liturgy, when you come and take the blessing of the icon, pay attention to this. At the bottom of the feet of Jesus in the river, many people will not see it here. You might be able to see it there, on the icon that is on the veil on the altar. At the bottom of the feet of Jesus, when he is in the river, his feet stand upon a serpent. His feet stand upon a serpent. There are two other icons where we see the Lord Jesus Christ in a dark space. The icon of his birth, where oftentimes you will see in the Orthodox icon, Jesus being born in what looks like a cave. The manger was, was made out of stone, made out of rock. Where the animals dwelt, it was almost like a cave. And you see the Lord Jesus Christ being born in what? In this reality where there is darkness. There is another icon where you see the Lord Jesus Christ enter into darkness. The orthodox icon of what? The resurrection. Where you see him enter into darkness in order to save who? Adam and Eve. This is the third icon. Where you see the Lord Jesus Christ enter into what? Into darkness. These three feasts, these three feasts, his birth, his baptism, and his resurrection show us why he did what he did so that he can enter into our darkness so he could go to the furthest points of death where we were so he could enter into where the devil once upon a time used to reign why for us and for our salvation he was not simply baptized to give example Yes, definitely, we follow his example. But he was baptized so that you and me can have access to everything he wanted to fix in us. Our broken nature who could not reconcile to God on its own, he came and fixed every broken aspect of our nature. So today when you celebrate the Feast of Theophany, remember these two things that the church places before you. That today we celebrate the appearance and the revelation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But you also celebrate Him who loved you so much that He entered into your reality, that He entered into your darkness, that He placed His feet on the serpent that would otherwise terrorize you and me, 
that he crushed the head of the serpent so that you and me can go back and be like Adam in paradise, united to God. May him who was baptized in the Jordan River by the forerunner, St. John the Baptist, may he receive our prayers and grant us that we may also work through the Holy Spirit who he has granted us access to receive again. To him be all glory now and forever and unto the ages of all ages. Amen.